All right, so in this video, I'm gonna solve the equation x to the power of three minus eight is equal to zero. So how most people solve this equation is they add eight on both sides. So I get x to the power of three is equal to eight. And then they take the cube root on both sides. So the cube root of x to the power of three is x and the cube root of eight is two. So then they get x equals two, which is a solution to this equation but actually there are more than one solution to this equation. So I'm gonna rewrite my equation here, x to the power of three minus eight equals zero. And now I'm gonna rewrite eight as two to the power of three. So I get x to the power of three minus two to the power of three is equal to zero. And then now I'm gonna use the formula a to the power of three minus b to the power of three is equal to a minus b times a squared plus a b plus b squared. So in this case, this turned into x minus two times x squared plus two x plus four is equal to zero. So now I get two equations. I get x minus two equals zero and x squared plus two x plus four equals zero. So for x minus two equals zero, I get x equals two, which was a solution that we already got. But now see on top of this, we have a whole nother equation with two more solutions because it's a quadratic equation. So to solve this, I'm gonna use the quadratic formula. So I get negative two plus or minus the square root of two squared, which is four minus four times a, which is one times c, which is four, or all over two a, so two times one. And this turns into negative two plus or minus the square root of four minus 16 over two, which is equal to negative two plus or minus negative 12 over two which is equal to negative two plus or minus 12 i over two, which is equal to negative one plus or minus six i. So these are the two more solutions to this equation. All right, so in this problem, I have four to the power of x is equal to eight. So obviously here, I wanna find the value of x. So for my solution, first start by rewriting my problem. So I have four to the power of x is equal to eight. Now four here, this is the same thing as two squared. So I'm gonna rewrite this as two squared to the power of x. I, all I did was replace four with two squared. And now eight, this is the same thing as two to the power of three. So I'm gonna replace eight with two to the power of three. So I have two squared to the power of x is equal to two to the power of three. And if I have something in the form a to the power of m to the power of n, this is equal to a to the power of m times n. So two to the power of two to the power of x, that's gonna equal two to the power of two times x, which is simply two to the power of two x. And now this is equal to two to the power of three. And now if I have something in the form a to the power of m is equal to a to the power of n, this means that m is equal to n. Meaning in this case, two x is equal to m and three is n. So I have two x is equal to three. And this is a simple equation. All I have to do is divide both sides by two. So then these two cancel out and I get x is equal to three over two. All right, so in this problem, I have x to the power of x plus one is equal to x. So to solve this, I'm gonna start by subtracting x on both sides. So then these two cancel out and I'm left with x to the power of x plus one minus x is equal to zero. Now, if I have something in the form a to the power of m plus n, this is equal to a to the power of m times a to the power of n. So x to the power of x plus one, this is gonna be 
equal to x to the power of x times x to the power of 1. Now I have this minus x is equal to 0. Now if I factor out x, I get x times x to the power of x minus 1 is equal to 0. So now this gives me two equations. I have x is equal to 0, and I have x to the power of x minus 1 is equal to 0. So x equals 0. This is already a solution. Now for x to the power of x minus 1 equals 0, I'm going to add 1 on both sides. So then these two cancel out, and I get x to the power of x is equal to 1. Now, because x has to be the same number, we obviously know that, well, what number to the power of self is equal to 1? That's going to be 1, right? Because 1 to the power of 1 is equal to self. So x is equal to 1. And there's no, actually, there's no other number that, when you take the power of itself, is going to equal 1. S meaning, x equals 1 is the only solution to this equation. So now, to check, the original equation was x to the power of x plus 1 is equal to x. So x to the power of x plus 1 is equal to x. And our first solution was 0. So if I plug in 0, I get 0 to the power of 0 plus 1 is equal to 0. Now 0 plus 1 is 1, so I have 0 power to the power of 1 equals 0. And 0 to the power of any number is itself, so I get 0 equals 0. Now to check for 1, I get 1 to the power of 1 plus 1 is equal to 1. 1 plus 1 is 2, so I get 1 to the power of 2 is equal to 1. And 1 to the power of any number itself, so 1 equals 1. All right, so in this problem, I have x to the power of x is equal to 100. So I'm going to first start by taking the natural log, or ln, on both sides. So I have ln x to the power of x is equal to ln 100. Now, if I have something in the form ln a to the power of b, I can move this x1 and b to the front. So this can equal b times ln a. So for ln x to the power of x, I can move x to the front, and I'm going to get x times ln x is equal to ln 100. Now ln 100, that's the same thing as ln of 10 squared. So I get x times ln x is equal to ln 10 squared. And if I have something in the form ln a to the power of b, again, I can move 2 to the front. So I get x times ln x is equal to 2 times ln 10. Now, there's something called the W Lambert function. And if I take the W Lambert function of something in the form e to the power of, sorry, a times e to the power of a, this is going to equal a. So this is basically what the W Lambert function is. So if there's something in the form a to the power, a times e to the power of a, that's going to equal a. So what I'm going to do over here is I'm going to rewrite x here as e to the power of ln of x because e, the e and ln cancel out and this results in simply x. So I'm just going to rewrite x as e to the power of ln of x and I have this times ln x is equal to 2 times ln 10. And now this is in the form a times e to the power of a. So now if I take the w Lambert function on both sides, This results in ln x equaling w of 2 times ln 10. And now if I take e to the power of both sides, I get e to the power of ln x is equal to e to the power of w of 2 ln 10. And e to the power of ln x, that's going to equal x. So I get x is equal to e to the power of w of 2 times ln 10. And this is equal to 
3.597285, which rounds up to 3.597. So this is my answer to this problem.